Phillips, uh, 17 to three. Second down and nine. Printers on the play action. Throws across the middle, pass is caught. And that's a first down at the Rice 34 yard line. And for TCU, the reception is made by Tim Maiden. Maiden is coming on a uh, end pattern from your left side as you'll see here. Printers makes a good throw. Big first down for TCU. TCU has scored points on their first possession in 16 of their last 22 games, including four times this year, and they are on the march. First and 10 at the 34-yard line. This is Tom Brunson again. He's across the 30, and he's down to the 28-yard line. That time, Harold, LT read his blocks beautifully as he worked his way off the right side. He really did, Dave. It was stacked up a little bit off tackle. He slid just outside the tackle's hip. Uh, made a nice cut, and George Lane had a great kick-out block on the outside linebacker. It'll be second down and about four for TCU. This is TCU's opening possession of the game. It looked as if Rice was going to take the Horn Frogs on a three and out, but Biasati, the punter, was injured. A personal foul was called, and that kept the drive alive. That time, they give Tomlinson a break, and Andrew Hayes Stoker on the carry, the junior from Arlington. Not much running room, no gain on the play. It'll be third down and four. Rice's defensive line is doing a good job of uh, stacking up the middle there. Early, the first three plays, it looks like Rice was going to snuff TCU, but the last few plays, TCU seems to have a little rhythm and is moving the ball. Unbelievably, last week in a win at Tulsa, TCU was 0 for 10 on third down conversions. This is Printers. The protection is good, and the pass in and out of the hands of his intended receiver, Lair Terrence Dunbar, and it's fourth down. Dunbar was open for the first down then. The, the pass from Printers is uh, overthrown. Uh, Dunbar could not get his hands on it, and TCU is in field goal range, but it looks like they're going to be going for it. So they will not bring Chris K. Lackey out to attempt the field goal. Instead, they will go for it on fourth down. Fourth down and a long three. Printers, three step jump, drop the pass. Caught, first down. Down to the right, 16 yard line. That's LaTerrence Dunbar. Well, Dunbar is the leading receiver for the uh, Horn Frogs and yards gained, and he is the fastest receiver. That time, Printers hits him on a little stop pattern just for a five-yard gain, and then he carries it on down the field for another five. Back down to the sidelines. What's up, pal? Okay, it's not good news for the TCU Horn Frogs. Joey Biasati has broken the tibia in his right leg. Of course, out for the season, but that's what happened to him. He's been wheeled off, and uh, they're going to have to deal with it with their second uh, kicker, but he's got a broken tibia in his right leg. All right, thank you, Hal. That's terrible news. LaDainian Tomlinson trying to get wide. Really could not get outside. Dan Dawson, he knows about leg problems himself. He broke his right leg in two spots last year. Came back strong in spring football and has really come on again this year. And he was able to haul down LT before he really got rolling as he tried to get around the left sideline. Dave Dawson was not really expected to make a comeback from that, that leg injury last year. It was a very serious break, and he has absolutely amazed the Rice coaches with his comeback effort. Lane and LT behind printers on this second down and six. Deep handoff to Tomlinson inside the 10, carrying tacklers down to the four-yard line. That's another Horn Frog first down. It's first and goal for TCU. Tomlinson ran tough inside, did a little sidestepping to avoid a couple of people at the line of scrimmage. Here you'll see on the replay as he comes right up, it looks a little tight in front. Tomlinson does a little sidestep and then slips his way for a nice gain all the way down to the four and a half yard line. TCU scored touchdowns on their opening drives this year at Nevada and against Hawaii and they're knocking on the door again. First and goal at the four. Tomlinson. Can't quite get in. Down to about the yard and a half line. Thomason shows a little power on that play as he's met by uh, Jason Abair, the safety. Abair comes from a uh, strong football family as his 
dad played for Tulane and his brother played for Notre Dame. Ladanian Tomlinson has scored 23 touchdowns in his last nine games. And he's a prime candidate to get the football right here. It's second and goal inside the two. Tomlinson again, spinning to the goal line, but not quite in there. Jackson Ortega around the football. Also, at the bottom of the pile for Rice, that was Larry Brown, the junior from Dallas. Picked up about a half a yard. It's third and goal with the nose of the football. Now just inside the one-yard line. Lane, touchdown! Over the top, the junior from Alvin, Texas, George Lane, his sixth touchdown of the season, his fourth rushing touchdown of the year. Well, the predictable play on that day was LT. He has always been the man that the Frogs go to down on the goal line. And normally, you see Tomlinson diving over the stack. This time, you see George Lane from down at Alvin uh, going over the top for TCU's first touchdown. Kay Lackey tacks on the extra point. Now a perfect 28 of 28 in point after attempt this year. TCU, a time-consuming drive, and they've got a 7-0 lead. There's only one place to go for the most complete NFL pregame coverage anywhere. Join Chris. Oh, my God, it might make it. TJ. He is being forced to live by a separate set of rules. More teams seem to get beat up there on that after turf. Sterling. If they don't run the ball with commitment today, then this is who you are. And Stewart. is about as black and blue as Berisha calls tight. Everything you need to know right up until kickoff from the guys who know it best. ESPN Sunday NFL Countdown. Sundays, 11 Eastern on ESPN. the brand new cable channel for sports fans who can't get enough. On ESPN Extra, you get more of the sports you love, like international soccer from around the world, including the UEFA Champions League. You'll see international auto racing, fitness, and outdoor programming. Plus, there's EXPN, which offers exciting extreme sports programming. It's all on pay-per-view, around the clock, all week long, and only on cable. Watch ESPN Now or your program guide to see what's on. Then order exactly like you would for a pay-per-view movie. ESPN Extra, you can't do better than that. All right, the Horn Frogs of Rice, rather of TCU, with a 7-0 lead now after a long time-consuming drive, 7.05 to go in the first period. We anticipated that it would be Ladanian Tomlinson taking the mail over the goal line, but instead it was George Lane, a one-yard touchdown run. Well, that was a very time-consuming drive, seven minutes and 55 seconds, 17 plays, probably the longest time of possession for TCU this year. And both of these coaches approach the game that if you can control the clock and control the plays, then you will be in total control of the game. And TCU was successful at that on this opening drive. Chris K. Lackey with the opening, with the kickoff to Rice, and it will go out of bounds. And so the Owls will have it first and 10 at their own 35-yard line. Outstanding field position for Rice. And when you talk about Rice, obviously, you're talking about the spread option. Quarterback Corey Evans had a great game last week, threw for a touchdown in the first half against Hawaii at home, Three ran for two more the scores. They've chosen to take it at the 35-yard line. First down. Dave, this offense depends greatly on his quarterback, but unlike a uh, passing team, the, the, these uh, quarterbacks for Rice will be carrying the ball a lot. They, they are the two leading Rushers on this Rice football team, and Evans is in for the start. 
We'll see two quarterbacks today. Evans will start, but I'm sure we're going to see Jeremy Hurd, the freshman, the redshirt freshman as well. And that's James Tyler, the junior fullback from Austin, Texas, on the carry. Goes right up the middle. Had a good game last week against Hawaii. Three carries for 56 yards, including a 39-yard gainer. Here are your backs and receivers for the Owls of Coach Ken Hatfield. Evans, the quarterback. Tyler, the outstanding fullback. White and Bradley will start the game, but we'll see a bevy of running backs. Brandon Manning is a tight end. Gavin Booth, the freshman wide receiver, caught a touchdown last week against Hawaii. And up front for Rice, Rod Bevan, the left tackle from Austin, is the best of the bunch. Dave, TCU was offsides on that first play, and uh, they're going to have a step off here, and Rice is going to start first and five from about the 40-yard line. Offsides on the defense, five yards from the previous spot, replay first down. Please reset the clock at 6.56, 6.56. Boy, you talk about great clock management. Take the opening kickoff on homecoming and run nearly eight minutes off the clock before you even give Rice a chance to take the ball. Well, ball, ball control is what Franchoni uh, really attempts to do. He was very successful, but the loss of Biasati is, uh, not was not in the game plan in order to control the clock. This is Evans. Going to let it go long. And the pass is incomplete. And he tried to throw it to Hurd. So Hurd has outstanding speed. Both the quarterbacks do. Now let's go ahead and take a look at that TCU group up front. And this is a group that's really key, uh, key to great pass rush. Aaron Schobel at the defensive end is a real star there. Chad Bayer leads TCU in tackles at his linebacking spot. Kenneth Hilliard came up with an interception last week, and that's a good group. The free safety, Curtis Fuller, is an outstanding player. It's second down and five for Rice. Another outstanding running play, and that's Robbie Beck. That's the freshman fullback from Atlanta. Rice was in an unbalanced set to the left as they brought their uh, wide receiver over to the tight end side and Rice will typically run towards their power set. So wherever they have the most men on uh, a particular side of the football is where they like to run. Beck had a two-yard touchdown run in the fourth quarter of last week's win over Hawaii, and he really has gotten more and more involved in the offense at Rice. Jamie Tyler has been bothered all season and last season, in fact, with hamstring injuries. Now it's third down in a yard. On the option, Evans trying to turn the corner. He does, he's got the first down. And he is down at the 48-yard line. Aaron Schobel, good pursuit, brought him down from behind. Aaron Schobel comes all the way from the left defensive end, all the way across the defense, and makes the tackle on Evans on that play. As uh, Rice was able to come in in a tight set, they motion toward the weak side. And another tendency that Rice has, Dave, is to run toward the motion. Evans with a good carry. He came into this game as the leading rusher for the Owls with 373 yards. It's first and 10 for Rice. Their first possession following a long sustained drive by TCU. Going to throw. Incomplete. And a man, Gavin Booth, the freshman right out of high school from Grand Prairie was running wide open. Would have been six if he'd been able to put it on the money. TCU must have had a busted coverage on that play as uh, there was no one lined up in front of the wide receiver. And actually, Evans just overthrew him. He was wide open as Curtis Fuller went over to help out. But uh, Gavin Booth, a great sprinter from uh, South Grand Prairie, close here to Fort Worth. Second down and 10. Evans to the right will keep it. And that is good penetration for TCU. Shannon Brazil was able to get in there and bust up the play. Shannon Brazil is a great player for TCU. He's the leading tackler, a senior. Uh, so far this year, he has 47 tackles. He is a great one. You see him scrape across and wrap up Hurd, followed by Schobel, who is all over the field. So it's third down and long, and this is really not the kind of situation you want to be in a, in a ground-oriented offensive attack by Rice. So we'll see what they pull out of the bag on third down and nine. Evans is able to escape the rush, still on his feet, finally caught from behind. 
and that's Bo Schobel who was in there, and he makes the stop and brings him down, and Rice will have to punt the football. Well, Bo Schobel is the uh, cousin of Aaron. He's a redshirt freshman, came in and got the pressure. Actually, the entire defensive line had a shot at Evans at one time or another, and Evans is a very elusive back and uh, almost got out of there before, before Bo was able to stop him for about a one-yard loss. All right, Travis Hale is in to punt the football for Rice. And LeVar Veal hoping to get an opportunity to return it. And he will take it at the six-yard line. Across the 10, and he's brought down at the 14. Dangerous place to, to take that football without a fair catch, but he did it. Meeks was there to make the stop for Rice. Veal is a fearless punt returner, Dave. He is uh, averaging over 14 yards per kick, and he will give Rice trouble. TCU's got the football back. They lead Rice 7-0. On ESPN Classic, there's a sport for every fan. And now, catch Game of the Night at 9. A different sport every night. Monday night baseball, always ahead. Tuesday fight night, a knockout. Wednesday night college football, the top rivalries. Thursday night NBA, slamming hoops. Friday night NFL, legendary matchups. Saturday night NHL. And Sunday night, it's real classics. Game of the night, every night on ESPN Classic. To get ESPN Classic, call 1-800-CLASSIC today. Do you want to know when the games begin? Tune to ESPN Now, available only on cable for a complete guide to all sports on television. You get continuously updated schedule information so you know exactly what's on when. Plus, get live sports headlines from ESPN.com and the Go Network. If you want to know what the latest sports news is and where the games are, the place to be is ESPN Now. ESPN Now. It's where sports fans go first for sports. To get ESPN Now, call your cable company. Three contestants. Four panelists. Sit down, young man. An eminent host. Your two-minute drill. Two minute Your two-minute drill begins now. Which Yankee shortstop? Who's the only Monday Night Football analyst? Which tiny point to? guard had 19? Which manager was hired and fired five times? NFL times. defenseman has been. Which Houston something? Rockets four? One very hot seat. Two of the toughest minutes on television. ESPN's Two Minute Drill, the ultimate sports quiz show. Mondays and Thursdays at seven. Hosted by Kenny Mayne. Well, there's a fan that came prepared for homecoming. That's a good-looking outfit. And that's the only kind of outfit you can wear when you're 11th in the nation and undefeated. Looking good. TCU has the ball and a seven-point lead on Rice. Oh, that's sort of a toga party motif down there. Yeah, I, First, don't know, I don't know where they issue those uniforms. <laughs> I've not seen those, Dave. <laughs> Here comes LaDainian Tomlinson. Well, you know, even when there's not much room for LT, he hits the hole with an awful lot of momentum and that time he just banged his way forward there was really nothing there and he picked up two yards it's second down and eight stopped there by scotty huffman who's an interesting story his older brother royce played for tcu as did his father and his grandfather played for tcu ladanian tomlinson nine rushes for 30 yards tomlinson last week 119 and a touchdown there goes Ladanian again, and he'll take it down to the 18-yard line, and it's going to be third down. Rice is stacked in there uh, looking for the run. They, they know TCU is uh, backed up here. Franchoni uh, generally elects to uh, power the ball out of his own end zone, but you may see TCU opening it up a little bit to back right the Rice defense off. This time, printers will operate from the shotgun. Four wide receivers in the pattern, two to the left and two to the right. Printers, the protection is good, lets it go down the field. The pass is in and out of the hands of his intended receiver. Tried to get it to Kevin Brown. Brown couldn't hold it, and so now TCU is going to have to punt the football. And with Joey Biasati injured, we're going to get a look at a new punter here. Here's another look at that third down play. Yeah, coming from your left side, Kevin Brown there almost makes a spectacular one-handed catch as he did get one hand on it, was not able to pull it down. And it looks like Chris K. Lackey will be doing the punting for TCU. All right, so K. Lackey, who is handling the kickoff chores, the field goal chores, and now the punting chores today is going to be busy against the Rice Owls. Gets it away in good shape. Short kick, fair catch called for at the Rice 49. Uh, 
Thomas Herm there, the receiver, who is the uh, third string quarterback. Uh, Rice recruits great athletes to play quarterback. And as we saw early, uh, Jeremy Hurd was out there playing wide receiver. Yeah, Hurd won the job, the Rice quarterbacking job in spring football, started the first game against Houston, but suffered an injury, a finger injury on his non-throwing hand and missed four games. And that gave Corey Evans a chance to get back in there and regain the starting spot. And on first down, they try the right side, and there's really not much room there as the TCU defense stacks it up. Hey, Rice is known for running the spread option, and, and when people think of option, a lot of times they think of running the ball outside. But actually, Rice prefers to run the ball off tackle. Uh, that time they ran it to the halfback. You'll see later in the game where both the fullback and the halfback lead into that uh, tackle hole, and the quarterback will just follow them in there. Leroy Bradley sees red when he sees purple. Last year, he rushed for a touchdown against the Horned Frogs. Seven carries and 50 yards had a, a good game. And Evans just threw that one away, and that was probably a good decision. Evans pass intended. Rice was in an unusual formation for them. They were in the uh, shotgun, and uh, TCU did a great job with the pass route. There was only two receivers out. As you see it here, taking it out of the shotgun. There's not a lot of pressure early, and then Chad Bear comes in to level Evans oh. as he has to get rid of the football. All right, so Bear makes his presence felt. It'll be third down and long. I mentioned the injury to Evans. He hurt his left knee in last year's third game against Texas, then suffered severe damage with a sprain the following week against Navy. Took him a while to come back, but he has come back. This is Evans, the keeper. And just nowhere to go. TCU's defense is right there. Stuart Ashley, the senior from Katy, Texas, ran him down from behind, and it's fourth down. Well, as we mentioned earlier, Rice does not like third and long situations. And that time they were they were staring at a third and nine. Uh, TCU played the run fairly well as Evans cut it back inside in good pursuit from the uh, defensive tackle uh, as uh, Ashley came over and made the stop. Rice set to punt the football. They get it away. And this will just get into the end zone. It'll be a touchback, and TCU will have it first and 10 at their 20-yard line. Well, it's a true Texas basketball shootout coming up in year end. The 2000 Fort Worth Classic, Thursday, December 28th at the Fort Worth Convention Center. In game one, it's the Texas women taking on Coach Jeff Mitty's TCU women. Following that, game two, the Red Raiders of Texas Tech face Coach Billy Tubbs squad. For tickets and more information, call 817-257-FROG. That's 817-257-FROG. First and 10 for the aforementioned Frogs. And Ladanian Tomlinson comes out of the backfield. Takes the swing pass from Printers and is knocked out of bounds at the 26-yard line. That's a gain of six. It'll be second down and four. Well, Franchoni finds another way to get the ball to Ladanian Tomlinson as they hit him on the swing pass. As Tomlinson moves out to the right, and Printers hits him on the run, and Tomlinson shows he can catch the ball as well as run with it. Second down and four. Three wide receivers, two to the right this time. Tomlinson, the lone set back behind Printers. Here comes Maiden in motion. And it's a pitch to LT. And he spins his way for a first down across the 30 up to the 32-yard line. TCU's going on toss sweep to the left. There is a defender out there. Tomlinson makes him miss, cuts it up inside for a nice gain of about seven yards. Keep your eye on Jason Bear came up from his spot to make the stop. Looks like Tomlinson's going to be the workhorse again today. Two weeks ago against Hawaii, had 49 carries in a single game. And here he goes again. He'll take it across the 35 and is up to near the 38-yard line. He'll be second down and six. Boy, these two teams love to control the football on the ground. They love to control the ball, possession, stats. They really do. Uh, Rice this year, Dave, has control the time of possession in all seven games that they've played. 
and in Hatfield's career at Rice, they have had ball control and time, time control of, with the ball in 41 out of 51 games played. That's amazing. Draw to LT, not this time. They smell it out and they drop him. Pittman is there. Brown also at the bottom of the pile. And we have come to the end of the first quarter. A quickly played first quarter on homecoming weekend in Fort Worth. TCU leads at home after the first 15 minutes. Seven nothing over the Rice Owls. We'll step aside from Fort Worth momentarily and return in a moment. You're watching WAC Football from ESPN+. Plus. Attention speed freaks. If you want to get in the driver's seat for the best NASCAR races ever, then start your engines. Because every Sunday at 4, ESPN Classic is reinventing the wheel with three hours of smoke and pedal to the metal mayhem. See the greatest names in NASCAR history gun for victory lane. We're coming into your living room full throttle. So break out the Shasta. It's Classic NASCAR every Sunday at 4, only on ESPN Classic. To get ESPN Classic, call 1-800-CLASSIC today. Get into the zone, the ESPN zone, the ultimate sports dining and entertainment experience. Eat great food, watch any game that you want, and compete in our sports arena. ESPN zone, what more do you need? Visit the zone in Baltimore's Inner Harbor, in downtown Chicago, in New York's Times Square, in Atlanta's Buckhead District, and in downtown Washington, D.C. Get into the zone. Welcome back to Fort Worth. TCU set to begin the second quarter. George Lane on the sidelines telling everybody about how he scored the only touchdown so far this afternoon. One yard touchdown dive by the Horn Frog fullback. The only score to this point. TCU seven, Rice nothing. Coach Fran cooking him up on the sidelines for TCU. We we're talking about time of possession. TCU controlled the football. Harold Muckleroy for the majority of the first quarter, and they, on average, control the football about five minutes more than their opponents each game this season. Well, Coach Franchoni likes the running game, and that's how you control time of possession. When you're throwing the ball all over the lot, there's a lot of incomplete passes that stop the clock, and you lose time of possession. And we begin the second quarter with a third and five situation. Timeout, TCU. First charge timeout. All right, and TCU opts to burn the first of their three timeouts. Timeout. Dave, we talked a lot about time of possession. Uh, in last year's game against TCU, Rice was able to hold the ball for 34 and a half minutes to TCU's 25 and a half minutes, a huge nine minute spread. And uh, during that big third quarter, the game was tied at halftime. Rice came out and put up 21 quick points on TCU in a short four-minute span. All right, let's head on down to the sidelines. What's up, pal? Well, I tell you what, guys, uh, just found out that they're taking Joey B. Asadi to the hospital. Uh, they are going to operate on him uh, immediately with that broken tibia. Uh, so he's on his way to the hospital. But interesting enough, as he was being carried off the field, the first thing he said was, did we get a first down? And then as he's being rolled across the the Horn Frog bench, he said, go guys, go get them. So uh, he's going to the hospital right now to have an operation. Back up to David Harrell. All right, thanks so much, Al. We wish the best for Joey, obviously. Third down and a long five, three wide receivers, two to the left, Tomlinson the lone setback, printers on a three-step drop, guns the football over the middle. Pass is complete. Gets it to the tight end, Roberts, and he is very close to a first down. B.J. Roberts, the junior. David, it looks like uh, they're going to measure this, but it looks like he's about a half yard short of that first down. You know, obviously, with TCU having such a phenomenally successful football season right now, we're getting into some real record territory. The Frogs' 11-game winning streak that they're currently on matches the school's second longest string from back in 1934 and 35, and it's the best streak in 62 years. So fourth down, fourth down in less than a yard. And Kay Lackey is in to handle the punting chores, his second punt of the day, and he sends a good one down the field. 
And this one is pulled in at the 14-yard line. And Helm really nowhere to go. Steps forward, and he is brought down at the 17 after a three-yard punt return. Step aside momentarily from Fort Worth. The Rice Owls going for their fifth consecutive win over TCU, but they trail by a touchdown in the second. this month on ESPN Extra. I'm Dan Patrick here in the ESPN Radio Chopper. Radio marketing is all about promotions. That's why we're blanketing the country with these ESPN Radio Bats. We've got live sporting events. We've got call-in shows. You can log on to ESPNRadio.com and find out more about stations in your area. Or you can listen online. So tune in, and if you happen to catch one of these bats, enjoy! The Owls of Rice have the football. They trail TCU 7-0. Obviously, that guy knows where to get a good tattoo here for work. On first down. Griffin on the carry that time for Rice. That is Anthony Griffin, the senior from Gulfport, Mississippi, on the carry. And he is bumped out of bounds at the 22-yard line. That's a gain of three. It'll be second down and seven for Rice. Now Rice has played an awful lot of good football this year. They're a lot better than their record indicates. They're one and three in the WAC, two and five overall. They played two extremely difficult non-conference games against Oklahoma, and they played at Michigan. They won the battle of the statistics against Tulsa, but lost to the Golden Hurricane. Turnovers and key penalties really hurt them in that game. Evans, nowhere to go. Aaron Schobel got him high and hitting him low for the Horned Frogs. That was Adrian Lewis. TCU sniffed that one out as uh, Evans was wanting to follow the fullback through the hole. Here he goes. He's, he's wanting to lead right up through the hole. There is Aaron Schobel who has had a great career at TCU. He is uh, up for a lot of defensive awards, including the Lombardi Award this year. So it was a good one, no question about that. It's third down, third down and eight. Evans, back to pass, the protection is good, sending this one down the field, and once again, Rice has players running open in the TCU secondary. That time it was the back Bradley, and they just misfired on that long pass. And you can see there's an awful lot of conversation going on right now in that TCU defensive secondary. That's the second time that the Owls have sent someone out that's been wide open, and they've been unable to connect for six. Rice loves to fake uh, one way and throw back opposite of that. This time they fake left, throw back to the right. And uh, you can see the back, coming out of the backfield was wide open. Charlie Evans was there to kind of cover up at the end. And you saw Gary Patterson, the defensive coordinator, uh, giving Evans a little bit of uh, encouragement. Here's Travis Hale back to punt again. His cousin Mitch Wills played for the Oakland Raiders. Sent this one down the field and retreating was LeVar Veal trying to get to the wide side. A little stop and go action. He was able to avoid the first wave and then stepped up into the traffic and got what he could get down to the 34-yard line. And Aaron, let me tell you, big game in college football today. Obviously, this TCU Rice game is huge, but a lot of the eyes of the nation were on Oklahoma and Nebraska, one versus two in the first released BCS ratings. It's over. The Sooners have won. Nebraska has lost. And right now, TCU, with 11 straight wins, they hold the nation's longest current winning streak. That is, that is absolutely unbelievable. Who would have ever guessed 
three years ago when Dennis Franchoni inherited a TCU team that was one in 10, three years later would be the leading, have the, the longest winning streak in the nation. That's intended for number 15, Cedric James. Well, that pass was right on the money from Printers. Number 24, Josh McMillan, the defender. Cedric James out there, and Printers threw a rope to James, hit him right in the chest. Flag is down. And looks like this one is going to go against the Horn Frogs. Relatively penalty free first quarter. Based on where that flag was thrown, I think we can expect a holding call here. Corner, 39 on. Holding on the offense, 10 yards from the previous spot. Replay first down. You know, field position is a big part of this game, and so far TCU has been bottled up on their end of the field. This is actually their best field position of the day, but uh, still they're a long way from the goal line as they started on the 33, and now we'll work from the 23. First and 10 from the 23-yard line. Rice in a 4-3 formation, defensive alignment. Play action, fake to LT. Now printers will throw, and he's got a man wide open. Cody McCarty. I say that's Tim Maiden out there, actually. Oh, is it? Yeah, TCU has some double numbers, but that's the senior wide receiver, Tim Maiden from Dallas Carter, whose brother, uh, Terrence Maiden, plays linebacker for TCU. A great play, as you can see, TCU throwing the ball down the field, and uh, Maiden making a great catch there and getting out of bounds for a huge game for TCU as they're down to the 42-yard line of Rice. All right, so Maiden with the reception. And they are into Al territory. First and 10 at the Rice Al 42-yard line. Here comes Tomlinson. And not much running room for Tomlinson. Vanover shot through from his middle linebacking spot and held up LT, and then Tomlinson was brought down. He had to do a, a real workmanlike performance just to get beyond the line of scrimmage for a one-yard gainer. Well, Vanover, who's substituting for the injured uh, Joe Bob Thompson, who had the ankle injury last week, ran free on that play as he scraped off tackle and hit Tomlinson in the backfield, and Tomlinson was able to struggle for about a one-yard gain. Vanover had a sack last week against Hawaii. That was the first sack by Rice in more than 100 snaps. Printers, all the time in the world, and he's able to complete the pass. So Maiden's got another one. Well, Maiden appears to be the guy that Printers wants to go to right now as he was able to hit him on a quick curl over the middle. And uh, the Horn Frogs are moving the ball through the air for really uh, probably only the second time this year. They move the ball pretty effectively through the air against Navy. They have not relied on the forward pass much. But here they go as he hits Maiden over the curl right in the middle of the right zone. First and 10 for TCU at the 26-yard line. TCU with a 7-0 lead. Here comes Tomlinson. Danny and Tomlinson carrying tacklers down to the 16-yard line. He put a couple of rice owls on his back and nearly picks up 10. What a tremendous run there by, by Tomlinson as he burst through there. And then he shows his power. Tomlinson is an extremely strong back. He can uh, squat over 625 pounds as he comes in there and just runs over the safety for rice and carries them. For a first down, it's first and 10 TCU at the 16 and a half yard line. And so TCU now in the red zone where they have scored in every opportunity inside the 20 this year. This is Tomlinson again, squirts through the hole to the 10 and maybe the nine. Tomlinson has posted eight consecutive 100 yard rushing games and he is right on course to collect number nine today. Well, Tomlinson hits it right off tackle. Again, there's not a huge hole there, but he shows his ability as he follows Jeff Milliken, David Bobo, and B.J. Roberts right up the left side, slides through for a nice gain of about seven. Second down, and we'll call it a long four for Coach Fran and the Horn Frogs of TCU. He, he, he uh, celebrate homecoming with a win over Rice this afternoon. You know, in the long history between these two teams, no school had ever won four straight against the other until the current streak that Rice has working against the Horn Frogs. 
Printer's 8 of 10 for 103 yards passing to this point. Here comes Ladanian Tomlinson again. Bounced it to the left and fought his way down near the first down marker. Came up about a yard shy. It's going to be third down and a yard. Dave Tomlinson has great vision. As you saw him come to the line there, there wasn't much of a hole. He was able to stutter step and break it off to the left and really made a couple of yards out of something that really didn't exist. They can see Tomlinson already with 17 carries, and we still have 10 minutes to go in the first half. Third down and just over a yard. Printers, Tomlinson, Rice trying to string it out, and he is very close to the first down marker. Needed to get inside the six-yard line. Well, I thought Rice had that play well defensed. Well, they had a lot of players to the ball. As you see, printers pitch out here to um, uh, Thomason. There are four defenders out there as they drag him out at about the five and a half yard line. We're going to get a measurement on this play. And uh, Dave, you were talking about Thomason and his carries. That was his 18th. You've got to be so strong to endure that type of uh, work out. Uh, as you mentioned earlier against Hawaii, he had 49 carries. It's a first down for TCU. It's going to be first and goal for the Frogs. Inside the six-yard line. Eighteen carries for LT already this afternoon. That's amazing. He is the workhorse, and it, it, uh, statistics show that as the game goes on, he gets better. His best carries this year are his carries uh, 21 through 30. Here comes Tomlinson again. He's inside the five, down to about the three. Yeah, just to follow up on that point, Harold, when LT carries the ball in the game, carries 21 to 30, he averages 7.3 yards per carry. So he wears down the defense. But without a doubt, plus he gets a rhythm, and he, he finds the seams. Uh, his line kind of gets into a blocking scheme that he's familiar with. And uh, very few backs have the strength and endurance to make it to where during their 21st carry, they're that strong. Second down and goal at the three-yard line. But Terrence Dunbar is split out. And this is Jordanian Tomlinson into the end zone for the touchdown. A flag is down, however. Offsides, the call against Rice declined. And Ladanian Tomlinson in very familiar territory. The end zone following a three-yard touchdown run to extend the Frogs' advantage. Well, Tomlinson uh, had a much larger hole there than he's seen all day long as the uh, right side of the TCU line blows a big hole in there. And then George Lane kicks out the linebacker. And he was way deep in the end zone uh, before he was hit. K. Lackey is on to add the extra point. Shoots it through, and it's 14-0. Ladanian Tomlinson now with 46 career touchdowns. The senior from Waco's University High School really having a great year. TCU 14, Rice nothing. Back to Fort Worth in a moment. Every Wednesday night from 9 to 11 is Wednesday night college football. It's game of the night only on ESPN Classic. Classic rivalries. Touchdown! Classic legends. Classic bowl. The snake does it again. <laughs> Touchdown, Nebraska! The only place to be for the greatest games in college football is ESPN Classic. Wednesday night college football, every Wednesday night from 9 to 11. Introducing ESPN Extra, the brand new cable channel for sports fans who can't get enough. On ESPN Extra, you get more of the sports you love, like international soccer from around the world, including the UEFA Champions League. You'll see international auto racing, fitness, and outdoor programming. Plus, there's EXPN, which offers exciting extreme sports programming. It's all on pay-per-view, around the clock, all week long, and only on cable. Watch ESPN Now or your program guide to see what's on. Then order exactly like you would for a pay-per-view movie. ESPN Extra, you can't do better than that. 
How would you really like to get to know Jeff Gordon, Dan Marino, Dennis Rodman, Brett Favre, Pete Sampras, Charles Barkley? Find out why Greg Maddox wears a Mickey Mouse watch, what Mike Piazza does in bars, what kind of wrestler Tim Duncan would be. All this and more in Outtakes, a new book by Dan Patrick. Full expanded interviews from Dan's Outtakes column in ESPN the magazine take you inside the minds of today's favorite athletes. Offbeat, revealing, and fuego. Outtakes in bookstores now or through ESPN.com. There's a couple of future Horned Frogs right there. They already got the sign language down. TCU 14, Rice nothing. Nine minutes to go till halftime. Ladanian Tomlinson just went into the end zone. Three-yard touchdown run. So Rice set to answer. So far this afternoon, Harold, it's been a, a game of long possessions. Well, without question, uh, TCU has done a great job of controlling uh, the ball. K. Lackey kicks this one out of the end zone. He's going to put Rice backed up on their 20-yard line again. As again, the game of field position has been push the ball as deep into the other uh, person's uh, territory as possible. TCU with a big edge thus far in the time of possession. They've controlled the football already this afternoon. Almost 15 minutes. 15 of the 21 minutes played thus far in the first half. Just under nine minutes to go till halftime. By the way, it's homecoming here at TCU, so stay with us at halftime. We've got lots of great halftime activities coming up. We're going to talk to the head basketball coaches of the women's and men's program here at TCU. Have a special feature on Ladanian Tomlinson, so don't break away at halftime. Stay right here with us. It's Corey Evans, the quarterback with the keeper. He found some room that time around the left side. Nice gainer on first down, picked up about six yards. He's brought down there by number 48, Chad Bear, who's the uh, number three, number two tackler on TCU's team this year with 59. So here's Evans, he's got outstanding speed. He can run at 10-4 in the 100 meters. Again, trying the left side. Sean Worthen, how about that? He's like a dancing bear in there at the nose tackle position, just bounced right outside and brought Evans down from behind, shy the first down marker. It's going to be third down and about four. Worthen has tremendous uh, speed and agility. There you see him, number 95, the big guy, 6'2", 302 pounds from San Antonio. Uh, he is a tremendous football player. Coach Fran really thinks this young man has a great opportunity to play on Sundays next year. He can bench press 530 pounds, one of the strongest Horned Frogs. So here we go, third down and three for Rice. Evans, play action, sends it down the field, pass is caught, first down. And that's Manning, the tight end, made a fine catch, laying out, makes the catch and keeps the drive alive, but a flag is down in the backfield. This one is going to go against Rice. Looks like we've got an unsportsmanlike conduct call against Rice on this as that ball was completed to the tight end. He was dragging across the middle. Discussing this option here with the TCU defense. You know, Dave, Rice is not known for its passing game, but one thing that they have shown a tendency for when they do pass, they love to throw away from uh, their motion that they that the, they establish. If they flow to the right, they'll always throw back to the left. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct on the offense. 15 yards from the end of the run, first and 10. Ooh. So, Rice gets the first down, but the mark off will come after the, the pickup of the first down. So Manning's catch will stand, and that was a fine play for the junior from Mahia, Texas. You're talking about the Rice passing game. Travis Thompson also plays tight end for Rice, and this is the first time since 1992 that Rice has had two tight ends catch a pass in the same season. Not game, season. That, that, that's remarkable. That, that, that is just absolutely an unbelievable statistic. <laughs> but it does show you how much they depend on the running game. First and 10 from the 17. And that time, Jeremy Hurd slipped into the game. And 
it didn't fool the TCU defense, not even a little bit. That's a loss of two. It's going to be second down and a dozen. There's Hurd, the redshirt freshman from Duncanville, Texas. Rice has uh, had a great success recruiting in Duncanville. As Travis Hale, the punter, is uh, from Duncanville. In fact, when we talk about recruits, Rice has 19 players from the Dallas-Fort Worth area on their team, and TCU has 19 players from the Houston area on their team. Here goes Hurd. Looks like he wants to keep it again, and he does. Oh, and he lets the ball go loose at the last minute. I mean, Hurd was halfway down before he pitched it out to White. And that play worked. The TCU de defense does a great job of stringing this ball out, and this ball is very close to being pitched forward. Uh, it's ruled as a fumble. As you see Hurd here going to his left, TCU defense stringing it out. And you couldn't really tell from that angle as Curtis Fuller came up and put a big hit on uh, Jeremy Hurd. Well, you called it, Harold. That was very close to being a forward lateral. Third and a short six. Hurd will try the right side. Late pitch, ball's loose, picked up, recovered by Fuller. He's got it for TCU at the Rice 11-yard line. Curtis Fuller makes a tremendous play here as he is coming up and putting pressure. He has actually got the pitch man on the play. The ball bounces straight up in the air. Here as you see, Hurd uh, moving to his right. He really makes a bad decision, makes a bad toss. Curtis Fuller almost was in the end zone with a touchdown there as he is coming up and catches it on the first hop. Russell Gary puts a big stop there on the quarterback. And then there's Curtis Fuller for the big play for TCU. Well, Rice leads the whack in turnover margin, but there they make a big mistake, and Fuller nearly took it to the house. Here's Tomlinson inside the 10, keeps the legs churning and down to the seven yard line for a gain of four. TCU's pounding it right up the middle there, followed uh, Victor Payne right off his left guard and uh, picked up about three yards on that play. So on second down at six, ball resting at the eight yard line. TCU can pick up a first down without scoring a touchdown. Printers, three-step drop, sends this one to the end zone. Pass is knocked away. Good defensive play for Rice. That was Josh McMillan. McMillan greater, made a great play there, number 24, as, as uh, Printers is trying to hit Maiden in the corner of the end zone. Maiden actually had a little bit of a step on him, but uh, McMillan was able to close on the ball and uh, knock it away. Yeah, McMillan knows a little timeout. bit about TCU. Make, Second timeout. Making outstanding plays. His cousin is Vernon Dean of the Washington Redskins. So TCU wants a timeout, timeout here. TCU. Second timeout. To talk over this third down and six. Rock Van Treeter Financial. Clock stops. 4.58 to go in the first half. Carol, let me ask you. Last week, TCU really had problems moving the football on the ground against Tulsa. How much time do you think Rice and their defensive coaches spent this week taking a look at what Tulsa was able to do that nobody else, frankly, has been able to do against the Horned Frogs this year? Well, I think without question, a uh, good coaching staff like uh, Ken Hatfield has is going to watch the tendencies and the ability that what Tulsa was able to do to stop uh, TCU, and I'm sure they've implemented some of that. On the other hand, Rice has got a good defense. Uh, they, uh, Tulsa reverted to a lot of stunning and twisting in their defensive line last week. Uh, Rice has done some of that today, but they've played a lot of heads-up defense and uh, their, their base defense. But uh, Hatfield uh, did not become the 10th winningest coach uh, in college football today uh, by not being smart. Boy, that's an understatement. Of course, he had a great run at Clemson, at Arkansas, Air Force, and now at Rice. Third down, six. James in motion. Printers on the play action. Across the middle, incomplete. Looking for LaTerrence Dunbar in there, and it's fourth down. And Chris Kalaki will come on. That one was almost inter intercepted. Uh, Jason Abair, the free safety, 
uh, came over and uh, knocked that ball down and almost had it. Uh, Printers threw a rope at that time, and it may be the speed of the pass that uh, the reason Abear didn't catch that. Kalaki is on to attempt the field goal. This one will come from the left hash mark just inside the 15-yard line. So this will be a 24-yard attempt. He's 7 of 8 on his field goal attempts this season. And he fires it right through. So TCU is able to take advantage of the Rice fumble, and they convert it into a 24-yard field goal by Chris K. Lackey. 4.50 to go till halftime. TCU 17, Rice nothing. ESPN the Magazine. Stuart Scott wants the fleece. Booyah! Stuart, only brand new subscribers get the free fleece. Everyone wants our warm, roomy fleece pullover. It's free with your paid subscription to ESPN the Magazine. Maybe you want to take out another subscription. Call now for ESPN the Magazine. Get 26 issues, a year's worth for just a dollar an issue. And your fleece pullover is free. 1-800-979-8998. You better come to work. You drop a pass, you run a mile. Run every one you miss of a block, them. you run a mile. You fumble the football, and I will break my foot off in your... And then you will run a mile. We will be perfect. Show me, son. Perfection. Lose a day, they'll fire you. You must be outside your mind. I'm a winner. Victory! Show me, show me. I come to win. I go to win. Remember the Titans. Rated PG. Now playing. He's a coach. This time I want to see three things. A teacher. A friend. You know, what, are we trying to make this kid's life impossible? He's the White Shadow. The classic series now only on ESPN Classic. From what I hear, you guys need a basketball coach real bad. This old school pro turned coach shows these inner city high school kids what life's really about. Nobody said it'd be easy, but Ken Howard is... Like a White Shadow. The White Shadow, weekdays at 10, only on ESPN Classic. Well, TCU, the Horned Frogs, extend their lead. They cash in a turnover from the Rice Owls with a 24-yard Chris K. Lackey field goal. It's 17 to nothing. Obviously, the largest lead of the first half by TCU. Horned Frogs with a little revenge on their mind. They've lost four straight in this series to Rice, but right now they lead by 17 as Chris K. Lackey gets the good foot into that one, and it'll be a touchdown, and a touchback, rather, and Rice will start first and 10. First and 20. Dave, we hadn't talked much about the weather today, but there is a strong breeze coming out of the south, and I'm sure that's helping Jay K. Lackey as he's kicking from the south to the north. Uh, other than that, though, it, what started out to be a, a very overcast day is still overcast, but you're seeing a little bit of the sunshine, and uh, maybe we're going to be fortunate to not have that rain like we had last week in Tulsa. Oh, that was that was the worst. I know Hal Jay enjoyed that rain down there on the sideline. <laughs> we were lucky that he was able to get his whole haircut thing worked out. Remember how he looked like a drowned rat last week? There we go. Rice has got the football, and they will start on the ground, and they'll give it to the dependable Jamie Tyler, and Tyler goes off the right side, takes it for a yard. It's second down and nine. Dave, this TCU defense has had an incredible run against uh, rushing teams. In the last 11 games, TCU has given up only 651 total rushing yards. That's an average of 1.9 yards per attempt. Uh, incredible. I can top that. <laughs> I can top that after this play. Second down and nine. Evans. Protection is good across the middle. Pass is incomplete. Tried to get it to Gavin Booth, a freshman wideout. Incomplete. All right, I can give you one. That's better than that. How about this? How about the fact that TCU hasn't given up a second quarter touchdown all year long? That, 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 that is really the important one. Top that. Score. Yeah, top score that. is what counts. Uh, TCU has given up a total of six touchdowns all year, and they've all come in either the first or fourth quarter. Yep, four in the first quarter and two in the fourth. Okay, I'm going to one-up you then. All right, so name so, that tune. So far, TCU has outscored their opponents by 179 points. Uh, I don't know if I can come back from that. Here comes Evans on the keeper. Oh, nice move to get outside. Turns the corner, Evans and he was down. Keeper. No fumble on the play. He's ruled down, and he was brought down shy of the first down marker. 
Dragged down at the 28-yard line, he did the 30. And Evans, oh man, if you're a Rice fan, you don't want to see Corey going after that knee. Well, he showed how elusive he really is as he was back to pass that time and then uh, scrambled out of the pocket. And Charlie Owens made a fabulous tackle for TCU. Charlie, uh, number 17, came in there and stopped Evans about a yard short of the first down. Sure hope Evans is not hurt. He's really come back from an awful lot of rehab to be able to play after the knee problems that we described earlier in the first half. He showed really great quickness on that carry. Here's another look at the play. You see Evans working out of the uh, shotgun, and actually it's just a quarterback draw that's called. He does a great job of eluding a couple of defensive players, and then Charlie Evans brings him down by the shoulder pads and stops him a yard short. These Rice quarterbacks have tremendous athletic ability. They're, they're all extremely fast and quick, and uh, they have a history. That was pretty close to a fumble there. They, they have a, uh, a history of being the top rushers on the squad and uh, extremely athletic, and they, they recruit a lot of quarterbacks that end up playing other positions. Earlier this year, uh, Wolf was quarterback uh, for uh, Rice as he came in after the uh, injured Jeremy Hurd and Corey Evans were hurt, and Ben Wolf came in and started and actually has been their most productive passer for the yeah. year. Yeah, the three quarterbacks that play primarily for them, he, he is the best passer, no question about it. All right, so Evans is on his feet. And he's leaving the game under his own power, and obviously that's a good sign. So with Evans out of the game, Jeremy Hurd will climb back under center. Now, Hurd's last experience at quarterback for Rice was not that pleasurable. He nearly was called for a forward lateral on a play that kept a drive alive, and then later a late pitch led to a fumble that was recovered by Corey Fuller at the, T at the Rice 11, and the Horned Frogs converted that turnover into a 24-yard Chris Kalaki field goal. That happened just about 90 seconds ago in a left game time. Now we're down to about three and a half minutes to go till halftime. TCU, and look at Rice going for it. Fourth and one at their own 29-yard line. It looks like they're trying to draw uh, TCU offsides. And what a great heads-up play. I mean, they came to the line of scrimmage, jumped up there very quickly to make uh, TCU think they're going on a quick snap. TCU being very disciplined, decides not to jump offsides. And uh, Rice is uh, forced to call a timeout. And I suspect we'll see a punt here. Uh, from from the Rice Owls. Well, you can see the Rice, a well-coached team, even after that timeout. The offense is just now leaving the field. So here comes the punt team for Rice. Dave, earlier you talked about some of the disappointing losses that uh, Rice has experienced this year. They're really, in my opinion, a much better team in their record. Against uh, Fresno State just a couple of weeks ago, they had an eight-point lead with about four minutes to go in the game and ended up losing that. And uh, I know it was a very devastating loss for them. And as we all know, Fresno State is one of the best teams in the WAC. This is Hale set to punt again. Gets it away. Fair catch <laughs> at the 41-yard line by Lamar Field. So with three minutes and 20 seconds left to go before halftime, TCU has the football. They have great field position, and they have time to tack well, on another pass. touchdown. Team, yeah, talking about that Fresno State game, that was really a devastating game for Rice. It was a game they, they played at home. They, they led most of the way. They had an opportunity to go up 11 points late in that game, but the field goal by Derek Crabtree was missed. And Fresno State came storming back, and they won that game. 2 fakes. Printer's going to send this one down the middle of the field, and it is caught. Lane had it, lost it. Bear with the interception. George Lane had it in his hands. Could not hold the football. Bear comes up with the interception. Well, this was a perfect pass from Casey Printer's to George Lane, who hits him right in the chest on the run. Here we get another look at it as uh, TCU fakes the end around and then goes for the fullback, George Lane, right up the middle. The ball hits him oh. right in the chest, and then as he juggles it, Bear 
comes around to make the big interception. Perfect pass from Printers. You can't count that uh, interception against him. And give lots of credit to Scott Huffman. When the ball came into lane, Huffman pulled his arms away, and Bear was able to make the pick. A big play for Rice. They needed that badly. This is Hurd. Takes it straight up the middle, and he finds good yardage. Down to about the 25-yard line. Was there a fumble on the play? No, they're going to rule him down. So Hurd's been a little loosey-goosey with that football since entering the game. Well, they ran the play that I described earlier where they run a power play right off tackle with the quarterback. Uh, he fakes the option to the fullback up the middle. The uh, lead halfback comes in, and uh, Hurd has got two extra blockers as he goes up upfield and uh, picked up about eight and a half yards on that play. Not too much happening that time for White. White is near the first down marker, but he is shy of it. It's going to be third and less than a yard. You know, Abair made that great interception last week against Hawaii. Rice really came to the front as far as interceptions were concerned. They had five in the game, and their outstanding offense or their outstanding outside linebacker Dan Dawson had three interceptions in that game. Yeah, Dawson is the team leader with five, and uh, speaking of interceptions, that was their 14th interception of the season, which is the most they've had since 1993 as a team. Best ever for a Ken Hatfield coach team of Rice. They do pick up the first time, down that time as Tyler burrows ahead, and he is up to the 32-yard line. Jamie Tyler there, number 37, is... Uh, a big back for uh, Rice comes from Austin Westlake, which is known for producing powerhouse football teams. And uh, Jamie has had his best performances against TCU. Look at that, those statistics. Unbelievable. TCU's defense that leads the nation in total D and scoring D, holding Rice off the scoreboard. Only 32 offensive yards here in the first half. Try to slip the ball to the fullback, nowhere to go. Well, there was uh, both linebackers, Bear and Brazil, along along with uh, Aaron Schobel, just totally shutting down that inside game for Rice. You know, speaking of the uh, TCU defense, we talked about uh, they are the number one uh, defense in the nation, averaging giving up 246 yards per game, and have only allowed eight and a half points per game. Second down and ten. Third ball's loose. Chad McCarty's got it. Yep. Another fumble. So Rice that led the whack, and they were 11th in the nation in turnover margin coming into this game. They turn the football right back over to the Horn Frogs. Well, Hurd's going to keep it on the mesh, and there's Shannon Brazil. He's coming on the stunt, and the ball pops free. And Chad McCarty comes over from his defensive end position and recovers it for the Horn Frogs. And they've got the ball, Dave, on the 20-yard line with 44 seconds here, an opportunity to knock it in. TCU has one timeout left. 44 ticks of the clock left to work with here in the first half. Printers back to pass all the time in the world. Now sends this one into the end zone into double coverage, and it's incomplete. Roberts had A Bear and Kenny Smith with him, and it sails harmlessly out of bounds. Well, Rice does a fabulous job of uh, taking the TCU receivers out of the play. Printers had a lot of time, the offensive line doing a good job. Uh, Rice has only had six sacks this season, and uh, uh, Printers just didn't have anybody to throw to. He actually took quite a chance there of throwing it into double coverage. 37 seconds left to go in the first half, second down and 10. Following the Rice fumble, TCU at the Owls, 20. Already leading 17 to nothing. Printers on the play action. Taking it right up the middle. Takes it down to the 12-yard line. Clock continues to run, 25, 24, 23 ticks left in the first half. And now TCU is going to have to burn their last timeout. timeout. So with 21 TCU. seconds to go, 
Final timeout. The Horn Frogs will be looking at third down and three with the ball resting inside the 13 yard line. Printers was looking for Cedric James, number 13, his wide receiver who had come into motion that time. As he motioned to the left, he, he ran a uh, quick post pattern over the middle. Rice had done a great job of defending that, leaving Penter, uh, Printers no, no option except to run the ball. He does a good job of getting up in the center of the field, gains about eight yards. But TCU had burned a couple other timeouts earlier, Dave, and so uh, this is a pretty critical play with only 21 seconds. Uh, I don't think they can afford to complete a pass in, in, in uh, the field of play. Harold Muckleroy, let's go ahead and take a look at the remaining schedule for TCU. Next week at San Jose State, then two home games back-to-back, -back, Fresno and tougher than expected UTEP. The Miners having a great season. Last regular season game, the 24th at SMU. Third down and two. Printers, the pitch to Tomlinson. Inside the 10, inside the five, down to the four. That's a first down. Clock will stop long enough to move the chains. Well, there's 14 seconds left here, and I suspect you'll see Printers just down the ball, spike it, and down the ball, as they will have time to get one more playoff after this, more than likely. Three wide receivers split to the left, and Printers will spike it, as predicted, with 11 seconds to go. Interesting formation. You had four wide receivers out that time, three to the left to the short side of the field when Printers opted to spike the football. So obviously for TCU, you've got to be thinking here, a sack is inexcusable. Everything has to be an incomplete pass or a pass into the end zone. What do you got? You got time for maybe one shot at it. Yeah, I think this will probably be their only play um, as they um, are out of timeout. Brenner's back to pass. Protection is good. Sends it into the end zone for Dunbar, and the pass was knocked away. A good defensive play by Rice, and that was Greg Gatlin, sophomore defensive back from Houston. Well, Gatlin did a great job. There was a little bumping going on down there that could have been uh, called for uh, interference. But as we mentioned, TCU not wanting to take a chance of not getting points on the board has sent their field goal team out, and Chris Kalaki will be attempting his second field goal of the day. If he hits this one, he'll just be five field goals away from the second leading total career-wise in TCU history. Kalaki shoots it through. 22-yard field goal by Kalaki. Well, Chris is now 10 of 11 for the year. Uh, he's had a great career here at TCU, was uh, a Lou Groza candidate earlier in his career. He's had uh, just tremendous success, a great, a great kicker, a walk-on, who has earned a scholarship at TCU. So four ticks remain here in the first half. A good crowd today here in Fort Worth, kind of a late arriving crowd. I suspect a number of fans were uh, glued to their TV watching that uh, OU Nebraska game, but uh, TCU fans have got a lot to be proud of with this team that's ranked at number 11 in the nation. Yeah, we mentioned it. They're ranked 11th in the nation. They had an 11-game winning streak coming in to play today, and with the Cornhuskers' loss to the Sooners, the Frogs now possess the longest current winning streak in college football. And I'm sure if you ask those guys right there, they would know that. Without question, and I was thinking if I could find one of those uniforms, Dave, I'd, I'd get it for you. <laughs> you I mean, need an extra large toga. <laughs> get the king size. All right, Kay Lackey, he's been busy handling the kickoff chores, the field goal chores. He's been punting today in the wake of the injury to Biasati. If you joined us late, Joey Biasati had a broken fibula on his first punt attempt today. He's already gone to the hospital for surgery, and Kay Lackey is handling the punting chores as well. Chris sends this one down the field and through the end zone. So Rice has two timeouts left, but they have just four ticks left here in the first half. Well, as you look there at uh, Dennis Franchoni, the head coach for TCU, you've got to feel, Dave, that he is very comfortable and confident in his game plan and the way his Horned Frogs have played today. Mm -hmm. 
Rice looks like they're going to be heading to the locker room down 20 to nothing. Their starting quarterback, Corey Evans, appeared to suffer a knee injury. He left the game under his own power. Jeremy Hurd operating the offense. Now he'll just take a knee, and the two teams will head back to the locker room. All right, we'll send it down to Hal, who's standing by with Coach Fran. Hal? All right, Coach, the defense is controlling the game. The offense is controlling the clock. 20 to nothing lead. you got to feel pretty good. Well, it's a good first half. we got a long way to go. We've been in this position before and, and uh, didn't quite work out like we wanted to. It wasn't quite what this is, but uh, we've played well. Defense has really done a nice job. And the loss of Joy Biasati. Well, and he's uh, definitely a force. He had a great week last re week, a uh, reason why we won that game. That'll hurt us. Okay, good luck in the second half. Back up to Harold and Dave. All right, thanks, Hal. Thanks, Coach Fran. It's 20 to nothing. Horn Frogs celebrating homecoming, leading. We'll have our halftime activities from Fort Worth in a moment. Stay with us. Hi. As Chris Berman, host of NFL Primetime, I have an obligation to treat all the day's games with equal importance, to break down all the day's highlights with equal vigor, and to never stage a game in an airplane hangar in New Mexico and pawn it off as authentic, you know, like the government did with the moon landing. NFL Primetime, Sundays at 7.30 p.m. on ESPN. Hello, I'm Daryl Dawkins. Last year, ESPN aired Sports Century, the award-winning series that documented the lives of the century's 50 greatest athletes. And on behalf of the thousands of athletes that didn't make the top 50, I got to ask a question. Why 50? What about us? We're interesting. Don't we have some stories, too? Sports Century documents the lives of the world's greatest athletes five nights a week on ESPN Classic. To get ESPN Classic, call 1-800-CLASSIC. Love college hoops? Live for the sweet slam dunks? Three-point plays? Get a ticket to basketball heaven. Order ESPN's pay-per-view full court, and you'll get over 450 extra games. The top schools, the biggest conferences, all the action you can handle. ESPN full court, maximum college basketball. To order, call your cable company, DirecTV at 1-800-GET-SPORTS, or DISH Network at 1-800-333-DISH. The critics have spoken. Beckles is the best of all time on network TV at NFL Play-by-Play. -play. Dennis Miller brings a welcome dimension to the game. Finally, the fan has a voice in the booth. There's little question, MNF is an event again. Monday Night Football, it's powerful stuff. And we are back. It's halftime here in Fort Worth. TCU, the Horned Frogs, lead the Rice Owls 20 to nothing. It's quite a way to celebrate homecoming, and they're trying to snap a four-game losing streak in this series to the Rice Owls. All right, Billy Tubbs, the outstanding basketball coach of the Horned Frogs at TCU, has joined us. All right, early season practice. First, Billy, how about an update? What's going on with the Frogs? Well, we're making a lot of progress. We need to make a lot of progress, but we're excited about this season. Uh, our team's really working hard, and, and as I said, we're excited and looking forward to the season. Really, a week from this Monday, we play our first exhibition game. So, uh, you know, we're in the process of developing lineups and, and uh, developing our schemes. So it's going really well right now. You know, you've been to the postseason, either the NCAA or the NIT, in three out of the last four years. Last year, you won 18 games but didn't get a chance to go to the NIT. Are you using that as motivation for this year? Well, we really are, but we're not uh, motivating to go to the NIT. We're motivating to go to the NCAA tournament, and I think this team has a chance to do that. Uh, we're going to be uh, better than we were last year, I think. We're a little bit quicker. Athletically, we're a little better. So our motivation is just strictly pride, and we want to win. We want to win conference championships. And so, you know, we kind of reflect back on that, but really haven't talked about that as much as what happened last year is what we're going to do this year. A couple questions about conference affiliation. This is going to be TCU's last year in the WAC. Where do you see the competition in men's basketball coming? Well, I think it's going to be a great race, and I'm sure everybody's saying that, but I don't think there's one team that stands out head and shoulders above everybody else. And I think we're very uh, comparable to the other teams in the league. SMU's pretty much been picked number one in the WAC conference. 
But remember, we've beaten them with something like six out of the last seven times. So if they're number one, we ought to be in there somewhere. How about some of the early games of the schedule? You've got a big tournament that you're going to have here in Fort Worth. Well, we've, we're playing Texas Tech in Fort Worth in the downtown convention center, and uh, that's on the 28th. Now, we've got a good tournament in Hawaii where we probably are going to play uh, Minnesota and Georgetown. Uh, some of the early season games, uh, a couple of exhibition games on the 6th and the 10th, and then we open the season on the 17th against Northwestern State. So, really, a week from this Monday, we open, open exhibition season, and about two weeks from uh, oh, this Friday, we'll be playing our regular season. Billy, let me ask you a question about the BCS that Coach Dennis Francione is going through right now. You know, in college football, there's no margin of error. TCU essentially has to go undefeated to have any chance to play in a BCS-sponsored bowl. That's totally different from college basketball. You know you took Oklahoma to the national championship game. In college basketball, if you're playing your best ball at the end of the year, you still got a chance to win a national well, championship. And that's true. But now keep the one thing that is still a little bit similar are there some teams in the NCAA basketball tournament that qualify automatically. Otherwise, you have to be invited. And basically, that's what the BCS, or is it BSC, whatever it is, uh, they have to they really can qualify and still not get invited because everybody is invited. They could even take the number one team and not invite them. They're not going to do that. But uh, certainly I, I watch TCU football and they're doing such a great job and, and I believe that they deserve to be ranked higher than they are. But I think if they win out, but they not only need to win out, but they have to win out convincingly, as you know, then uh, some other teams are going to fall by the wayside. And the way I figure it is TCU comes in fifth in the bowl rankings and they're in. All right, we're going to take I've a look. I've been wrong before, though. No, but not very often. Right. Let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of your players. And let, let's start with Ryan Carroll, your senior guard. Ryan Carroll has uh, been with us four years, our most experienced player, the guy that's seen a lot of action. They're on the dunk, uh, great athlete, uh, really having a very, very good preseason. Uh, pre Probably the first year that he's played that he's paying free. So we're looking for a lot from Ryan Carroll. And you know, you've got more than just Carroll at the guard position. you got a lot of outstanding guards. Laster back there too. Laster's been hurt, uh, has missed a few practices, but good on uh, penetration, uh, did an outstanding job. And the, one of the key things we have with uh, Estelle and with Ryan Carroll is experience. That was what we were lacking at this time last year, and that's what we're very pleased with this year. We do have that experience factor in there. And over your career, you've had a bunch of outstanding point guards. What about McIntyre? Thomas is our starting point guard right now, and he is, again, he's a guy that's been in our program for four years, playing well, can hit the three, as you saw in that little clip right there. Uh, we expect him to be our point guard probably in the first game, but we got a lot of young players that's going to push these older guys. But Thomas and Ryan are the guys that are the, our most experienced players on our team. Thomas McTire will be an outstanding point guard for you this year. You know, we were talking a little bit about going into the season. Your goal is obviously not the NIT. Your goal is the NCAA. You, TCU is going to be moving out of the whack. You're going to be going to Conference USA. Once you get to CUSA, I, I would anticipate that more teams outside of the conference champion will be getting NCAA bids. Well, no question. Uh, you can expect five or six teams from Conference, UC, uh, U Conference USA, whatever those initials are. I'm giving you a lot of letters today. Yeah, conference and, USA, but, the BCS. Right, but uh, Conference USA will probably send six to seven teams to the NCAA tournament. So that's an advantage, although if you win it, which is our goal, you're going to be in there. So uh, the only place we're interested in any conference, whether it's U. USA or WAC, uh, we want to win. Billy, you got any thoughts on the different locations? You're going to be playing home games here in Fort Worth this season. You're going to be playing some on campus. You're going to be playing some downtown well, at the convention we center. We have two games downtown at the convention center this year. Our very first exhibition game a week from this coming Monday. And then we'll play Texas Tech in the convention center on the 28th of December. Uh, the Lady Frogs will play University of Texas. Remember them? Well, hey, two old Southwest Conference rivals, our men and women's team will play. So that'll be a great event. And we want people to get out there and buy season tickets and fill up Daniel Meyer Arena. Billy, at what point in your career did you decide that high-octane offense was the way to go? Actually, that was in my playing career that I decided that because I played on a team that scored over 100 points a game, and the neat thing about that was that we won about 90% of our games. 
And so that's just been a way of life as a player for me. I liked it, and it's been very successful in our systems at uh, Oklahoma, TCU, and Lamar. All right, Billy, we appreciate you coming all the way up here and spending some time with us. Good luck this season with the well, TCU Horned Frog basketball team. I appreciate that, and we want to see all these people watching the game and these people in the stadium at our, in our stands. I will certainly second that. Okay, That's thanks. Billy Tubbs, the head basketball coach at TCU. We've got more halftime activities in just a moment. TCU leads Rice 20-0. ESPN Classic presents explosive cinematic adventures. <laughs> Every Sunday night, the world of sports and movies collide with real classics. <laughs> Look what you've done! Sports movies with so much heart-pounding excitement, you won't know what hit you. You get my way and I'll drive right over you. Featuring the Hollywood stars you crave. Real classics. Every Sunday night, only on ESPN Classic. To get ESPN Classic, call 1-800-CLASSIC today. the jersey is it all just a dream Whoa! or is it a sports fantasy come true it was cool being that bad is it something you wear it's just making me a fashion victim or does it really wear you the jersey must have followed me home and does it have a mind of its own you bet it does give this old jersey one more try experience the power for yourself the jersey a new disney channel original series fridays and saturdays at 6 35 30 central only on disney channel everybody I'm glad you asked the success of three play from ESPN.com has been tremendous and now on one of these Nokia mobile phones you can play just about anywhere for example at the country club dining out fresco going out to the Hamptons three play from ESPN.com it's free it's sports give me the briefcase it's money presented by Nokia mobile phones our halftime activities in Fort Worth continue. It's WAC football from ESPN Plus this afternoon. TCU, the Horned Frogs, ranked 11th in the nation, 11-game winning streak. That's the longest current winning streak of any college football team in the nation. Lead the Rice Owls 20 to nothing. Jeff Mitty, the women's basketball coach here at TCU, joins me now. Jeff, thanks for making it up here. Yeah, thanks, Dave. Let me ask you first about your club, voted third in the WAC preseason rankings. Yeah, I think that's probably about where I thought we'd be. You know, we have a good nucleus of returners. I think we've got some good uh, influx of talent. Um, I, I expected us to be somewhere middle of the pack. I hope we finish higher, obviously. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at your schedule and some of the early games in your schedule. we got a couple of exhibition games up there that we didn't know who the opponents were going to be, but I guess we do now, right? Yeah, uh, you know, when you when you schedule four in exhibition games, we've got Russia coming in, and then we've also got a team out of Slovakia. They present you with an interesting challenge because you know very little about those teams. All right, and you've got a great group coming back. You've got eight returners from last year, and among that group, five seniors. So you got a veteran team. Well, we do, and we've got the, the Sutton Twins back. Karen Clayton is back as well. Janice Thomas, who is on the newcomer team for the WAC. Uh, we've also got Sally Spencer back. So it's a group that uh, of seniors that really wants to go out on a high note. I think they've been complimented uh, by the early group because our competition has been excellent. Let me ask you a little bit about the recruiting class that you're bringing into TCU. Ranked 22nd in the nation. That's going to be very gratifying. Well, a lot of hard work went into that class. The staff did a great job. I think what it really tells is that I think recruits are noticing the great things that are happening at TCU as a whole, as a university and an athletic department. But uh, we're excited about that group. Uh, uh, that's on paper only. So uh, we've got a lot of work to do to become better as a basketball team. You know, I mentioned that you finished third in the WAC preseason coaches poll for women's basketball in this league. Let's take a look. What do you think about some of the other teams that you're going to be in competition with there? SMU, Hawaii, Rice, these are all teams that have outstanding women's basketball programs in the WAC. Well, those three played in the postseason a year ago. Uh, I expected them to be at the top. 
Uh, but I also expect us to be able to compete at the top. I think they've got good basketball teams, but when I look at our basketball team, I think we can match up pretty well with all of them. All right, now I think we have the graphic. We're going to take a look at your schedule, the early portion of the schedule for the women's basketball team here at TCU. And there you can see the exhibitions, and then Yale, Tennessee, North Texas. That's good, strong competition early in the year. Well, it is, and uh, Yale will come in here on the 24th and then followed up right away by Tennessee, who's won three championships in the last five years. Uh, they, they were in the championship game a year ago, runner-up to UConn. Uh, they've got a great uh, basketball tradition, and we're going to try to sell out DMC. I know we had uh, a coaching clinic here last weekend, and we sold some group tickets, and we sold over 1,500 tickets in about 30 minutes. So that's an exciting game to have here in Fort Worth. Let me get uh, back to your outstanding recruiting class. When you went out and recruited the, these outstanding players, and you got some JC players, some junior college players too, did you sell the fact that you're, this program's going to be moving to Conference USA? No, no question. We, that's an exciting move for us, and uh, I think it's an exciting move for the players. Uh, it's a very strong basketball league. Uh, the Women's Basketball League uh, has had as many as five teams in the NCAA tournament. Last year, seven teams in Conference USA uh, played in the postseason. And so uh, one more year in the whack. Uh, we're going to try to take care of business there and then uh, move to Conference USA. Jeff, thanks so much for spending some time with us. Good luck with the TCU women's basketball program. Thank you, Dave. All right, that's Jeff Mitty, women's coach here at TCU. Now let's head down to the field where Hal's standing by. Hal? All right, 20 to nothing TCU lead, and uh, Rick Thompson is here with us, the general manager of ESPN Regional. And I, gotta, I don't know if it's the coaching or ever since uh, TCU teamed up with ESPN. It's got to be the ESPN. Yeah, we, we'll take credit whenever we can get it, Hal, that's for sure. Now, it's been a great relationship. We've been here about 18 months uh, working with TCU in the athletic department. Of course, Coach Fran and the Frogs have done a tremendous job helping us do what we do, and that's really take the message of TCU athletics to the Metroplex community, and that's what we've done the best of all. And ESPN is uh, taking a step further in that with uh, going into basketball now, the basketball season coming up with the Fort Worth Classic. Tell us what that is. Yeah, this December, it's going to be a first, the first year of a, what we hope will be an annual event in the Tarrant County Convention Center. Uh, it's going to be December 28th. It's two games, a doubleheader NCAA basketball. Our men are going to take on Texas Tech, and TCU women are going to take on Texas. Uh, December 28th, a Thursday night, right between the holidays, so it gives everybody something to do. Come out and see uh, a couple good basketball programs. Okay, and where is this classic going to be held? It's going to be at the Tarrant County Convention Center, right downtown Fort Worth. It's the first time any of the Frogs basketball teams have played downtown. So. You, you know what, uh, the good thing about this is uh, uh, maybe bringing back some of the old uh, Southwest Conference rivals there. Yeah, renew a couple rivals. Of course, University of Texas has a tremendous women's program down there. Uh, Texas Tech's been uh, in the NCAA tournament in the last couple years they've got a good program and I can't say enough about coach Mitty and coach uh, Millie they've just done a great job well all right Rick thank you very much for everything ESPN has done for TCU it's been a great marriage so far a great first half of this football game now let's go back up to Dave Weekly Dave. all right Hal thanks so much we've got plenty more coming from Fort Worth in just a moment TCU leads Rice at halftime 20 to nothing Introducing ESPN Extra, the brand new cable channel for sports fans who can't get enough. On ESPN Extra, you get more of the sports you love, like international soccer from around the world, including the UEFA Champions League. You'll see international auto racing, fitness, and outdoor programming. Plus, there's EXPN, which offers exciting extreme sports programming. It's all on pay-per-view, around the clock, all week long, and only on cable. Watch ESPN Now or your program guide to see what's on. Then order exactly like you would for a pay-per-view movie. ESPN Extra, you can't do better than that. Come on, Timmy, just go over there and ask her. Are you kidding me? I can't. Yes, you can. Come on. Dun, 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 dun. Da, 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 da,
Chris Mortensen here. As an analyst on NFL Countdown, I pledge to you that I'll tirelessly research all stories I report. I'll follow up and confirm all leads regarding Sunday's games, and I will never use the Telestrator to draw on players' faces. You know, mustaches, devil horns, hillbilly teeth. It's just the way we do things around here. Sunday NFL Countdown at 11 a.m. on ESPN. Here at halftime in Fort Worth, the Horned Frogs at TCU lead the Rice Owls 20 to nothing. LaDainian Tomlinson, 22 carries for 82 yards and a touchdown so far today. He sat down with ESPN's Shelly Smith. What is this building? What does it mean to you seeing all this history here? Well, <clears throat> it kind of reminds, reminds you of everything that has gone on at TCU. It just, you know, really makes you, you know, want to be a part of history. And you want yourself to be hanging up here, you know, one day. You've, you know, you've already got a lot of stuff hanging up here. Yeah. How much more do you think you're going to add to this collection? Well, hopefully a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, I'm kind of a person that, you know, while I'm here, I want to be, be, you know, known as perhaps the greatest player in TCU history. Is that important to you? Oh, yeah. Why you is know, that? Well... You know, that's, that's my goal, and that's what I work so hard for. It's times when, when guys are in, you know, in the house and I'm out there working by myself, you know, doing the extra things. So that's why it means so much to me. But it's hard to do that with people like Dave O'Brien, you know, uh, Sammy Ball. That's a pretty but, big uh, fixture looming over your yeah, head. Yeah, that's, that's a pretty, uh, uh, that's hard to do. So you walk up these stairs every day and you see this trophy. See it. What do you think? What do you think when you see it? Well, I just think how, how I would look if mine was right beside it. Because I, I really feel like Dave O'Brien paved the way. And, you know, uh, it's been a long time since, you know, 1938. My goodness, that, that's a long time. And, you know, it's probably time for another person from TCU to win a husband. You got four tattoos. Five. Five. Yeah. Why five tattoos? What went into wanting to do this? Well, the first couple was kind of just a thing, you know. And then it came to a point where I was getting the ones that I really, you know, felt like mm -hmm. was important to me, like the praying hands that say in God's hands, you know, and then my mother's, you know, face and my inspiration on the top, and then finally my family tree. Why was the family tree important? Well, when we're growing up on hard times sometimes, you know, I, I want to tell them that they're the reason why I play so hard, the reason why I want to be so successful, you know, and I just let them know what put my family tree. When you look at these windows, and this, I mean, this is your career already. Right. And you come down and you, you think about what you might accomplish this year. How full is this window going to be? Well, <clears throat> I, w I don't know. I would like to take up, you know, a lot of, that just... You know, what What I would like to do, mm -hmm. that's just the way I was always raised. You know, hard and determination is what carries a person. And that's something that has stayed with me throughout my whole life. All right, that's Nadanian Tomlinson. He definitely is a great player. And I've been joined once again by Harold McElroy. And Harold, you know, Ladanian Tomlinson still on pace to rush for 2,000 yards, and five of the seven players in NCAA history who have done that have won the Heisman. Well, Ladanian is a great football player. He's one of five from TCU that's been nominated to win the Heisman Trophy. And, of course, Davey O'Brien, little number eight, uh, won that Heisman Trophy for TCU back in 1939. All right, Ladanian Tomlinson isn't the only great player on TCU. They've got a bunch. Our second half is coming up. Stay with us. Zone, the ESPN Zone. 
the ultimate sports dining and entertainment experience. Eat great food, watch any game that you want, and compete in our sports arena. ESPN Zone, what more do you need? Visit The Zone in Baltimore's Inner Harbor, in downtown Chicago, in New York's Times Square, in Atlanta's Buckhead District, and in downtown Washington, D.C. Get into The Zone. It's college hoops time, baby. I love it. Get ready for the season with my college basketball preview from ESPN the magazine. I'll give you my picks and pants for the run to March Madness. Pick it up on newsstands now. It'll be awesome, baby. know when the games begin tune to espn now available only on cable for a complete guide to all sports on television you get continuously updated schedule information so you know exactly what's on when plus get live sports headlines from espn.com and the go network if you want to know what the latest sports news is and where the games are the place to be is espn now espn now it's where sports fans go first for sports to get espn now call your cable company All right, we are back. TCU has returned to the field. They're facing the Rice Owls. They're leading 20 to nothing. Now it's time to take a look, Harold McElroy, at our first half highlights. And we'll start out with a painful one for TCU. Well, jo Joey Biasati is hit on this punt, ends up with a broken fibula, and has been uh, sent to the hospital for surgery. That's followed by George Lane going way over the top for a touchdown. And then LaDainian Tomlinson powers it into the end zone. It would not be a, a, a half of football without an LTTD. And there's a fumble recovery by Corey Fuller. And that led to a field goal and another fumble. Jeremy Hurd coughs it up. The recovery is made by Chad McCarty. That led to another field goal. And it's 20 to nothing. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our statistical breakdown of the first two quarters. And it's brought to you by American Airlines. And there you see the highlighted stats. That's not a misprint. Rice, their great ground attack, 11th in the nation coming into this game, producing only 34 yards in the first half, Harold. Well, the TCU defense has totally dominated Rice this half. The numbers bear it out. And uh, Gary Patterson, the defensive coordinator for TCU and his defensive staff, have done a tremendous job all year. And that is the reason they are the number one defense in the nation. And you can see the turnover is a big part of this game. Rice has really been doing a great job this year taking care of the football, number one in the WAC in turnover margin, but they had two big turnovers, and TCU turned them both into points. Now, one interesting stat there we didn't talk about it. TCU has more passing yardage today than they have rushing yards. Well, that's a real rarity. Here's Chris K. Lackey with a second-half kickoff, and he sends this one down the field. And White can only watch it sail out of the end zone. Sean White did not get a chance to return that one. Kay Lackey's done an outstanding job on kickoffs today as he's kicked all but one totally out of the end zone and uh, forcing Rice to start 80 yards from the goal line. Well, Corey Evans started this game at quarterback for Rice but was injured late in the second quarter. Looked like a knee. Of course, he's had some knee problems. So Jeremy Hurd, who had two fumbles for the Owls in the second quarter, starts the second half at quarterback for Ken Hatfield's Owls. Hurd going right. Can he turn the corner? Yes. Not a pretty play, but it did pick up five. It's second down and five for Rice. Well, obviously, Rice saw the pursuit that TCU had to the ball in the first half, and the way you normally slow pursuit down is to try a bootleg, so you, you do a counter option. So this time, Rice tries to go to the left, fake, fake it. He bootlegs out to the right, thinking that TCU is over-pursuing, and Curtis Fuller comes up and knocks him out of bounds after a five-yard gain. Hurd can really run with it. After he was injured in the Houston game, he was on the sidelines for four straight games, and he rushed for a season high 97 yards against Fresno State. And going right up the middle, that is Jamie Tyler. So Tyler finds good running room, and Rice picks up a first down. Well, that was Rice's largest uh, gain of the day as they uh, come right up the middle. 
uh, the linebackers for TCU. Shannon Brazil and Chad Bear just barely missed there. Fuller gets run over, and then Russell Gary and Greg Walls come over to make the tackle. And you're looking right over Coach Fran's shoulder there. His TCU Horn Frogs with a 20-0 lead. We're just underway here in the third quarter. Once again, that is Tyler. Well, you know, Tyler is thought by many to be one of the best fullbacks in the nation going into this season, and now we're kind of getting a little bit of a, an indication, Harold, of what he is capable of when he's healthy, when he stays away from the hamstring problems. Well, he's a tremendous uh, football player. Two years ago against TCU, he rushed for 168 yards, which is his biggest game of his career so far. Big junior from Austin. Yeah, back in 1998, he scored both Rice touchdowns including one on a 46-yard run in a win over the Frogs. Once again, Tyler on the kick. And they just keep riding that horse. Tyler the across the midfield, striping and into TCU territory. Well, we've talked about uh, the strength of these two coaches, and obviously Rice has uh, come back with a different game plan the second half, blocking a little bit different up front, going to the big fullback, who did the, they did not use much in the first half, and... Uh, White is having a, a very good second, third quarter here. First down and 10 for the Owls. This is Hurd, two-step drop. Looking to throw, pass is caught. So Rice completes the pass for another first down at the TCU 36-yard line, and that's Weber coming up with it. Matt Weber, a junior from Commerce, Texas. Rice is doing a good job mixing up the ball here as they fake it to Jamie Tyler. Step back and hit the crossing wide receiver as he comes over the middle, and there's a, there's a lot of room there. Wasn't a real pretty pass. Weber made a nice adjustment on that ball that was floating, pulled it in, and Rice with their best drive of the game. They really need a touchdown to get back into this game. 13 minutes to go, third quarter. Late pitch, this is White. And White is banged out of bounds by Charlie Owens. But it's another good pickup on first down. And they have the ball. After a five yard gainer at the 32 yard line. Dave, you mentioned first down and, and a good pickup on first down. The first half, Rice was unable to move the ball on first down, consistently got themselves in long yardage situations, which is not what a wishbone team wants to do. No, not at all. Second down, and we'll call it a long five. Bird to Tyler. No, no, check that. Bird kept it. Put it in the belly of Tyler. You know, that play may have fooled me, but it didn't fool Russell Gary. He was right there to make the stop. Well, Russell Gary and Bo Schobel are there to make the stop on Hurd, and uh, they fake to the big fullback, Tyler, who's been making all the yards, try to uh, mess up the TCU defense here. Here's they fake it inside. Hurd keeps it, and Russell Gary, number 33, right there, and Bo Schobel to help him out to stop Hurd. All right, and some of the TCU defenders in the secondary imploring the crowd to get behind their effort. Big third down and four here. Rice with the football. The handoff to Tyler. And he's got the first down. He goes across the 25 down to the 24-yard line. You know, if you're joining us late, we went on and on about the accomplishments of the TCU defense so far this season. They lead the nation in total D. They lead the nation in scoring D, giving up just over eight yards a game. They haven't given up a touchdown in the second quarter all year long, and they haven't given up a touchdown in the third quarter all season long either. But Rice threatening here. First and 10 for the Owls at the Frogs, 25. This is Hurd going to the end zone. Pass is knocked away. Outstanding play by Charlie Owens. He was all alone back there, one-on-one -on -one coverage, and he made the good defensive play. Perfect timing on the play by Charlie Owens as, as uh, this play is actually thrown away from the defender. Again, Rice uses play action. They've got a receiver pretty well covered by Owens, and then he does a tremendous job of knocking the ball away at the last minute and avoiding the contact for the inter uh, interference. So Rice uncharacteristically went to the end zone with a pass on first down. Now it's second down and 10. This is 
was hurt. Throwing again, and the pass was incomplete. And you can see the frustration on Gavin Booth. He had a step on the defender, Kenneth Hilliard, but they just couldn't get the ball to lay in there. Well, Dave, you also see that uh, Rice is not used to passing. Uh, that was a timing route, and the timing was totally off on that. As, as Hurd overthrew his receiver by about five yards. So Rice runs the football all the way down the field to open the second half. But here at the TCU 25-yard line, back-to-back -back incomplete passes to the end zone. It's third and ten. Hurd thought about the pitch, kept it, tucked it, took it down to the 19. It's going to be fourth down and a long four. Initial contact made by number 59. TCU did a good job of defending this. It looked like there were some big numbers out there for uh, for Rice on the outside. And actually, Curtis Fuller there, number 18, does an outstanding job of faking Hurd out. He uh, acted like he was going to take Hurd on the pitch and then went to the outside and strung the play out. How about that stat? Rice with more offensive yards on this drive than they had in the first half combined. And you can forget about the field goal team. Rice is going to go for it on fourth down. But they're going to talk first about it first. Out. TCU's done an outstanding job uh, against their opponents as they've uh, gotten into the red zone. And for those of you that don't know what we're talking about, red zone's inside the 20. Ken Hatfield and Jeremy Hurd talking over a key fourth down play. We'll come back to Fort Worth in a moment. Watch UEFA Champions League action this month on ESPN Extra. to an end this weekend. But that doesn't mean you have to leave the worldwide leader in sports at home. Because the news, interviews, and analysis from your favorite ESPN personalities continues all day, every day on over 600 radio stations nationwide. Check your local listings to find the ESPN radio station near you. ESPN Radio. Take it with you. Three contestants. Four panelists. Sit down, young man. An eminent host. Your two-minute drill. Your two-minute drill. Your two-minute drill begins now. Which Yankee shortstop? Who's the only Monday Night Football analyst? Which tiny point guard had 19? Which manager was hired and fired five times? NFL times. defenseman has been. Which something. Houston Rockets four? One very hot seat. Two of the toughest minutes on television. ESPN's Two Minute Drill, the ultimate sports quiz show. Mondays and Thursdays at seven. Hosted by Kenny Mayne. It's fourth down and four for Rice at the TCU 19. Opening drive of the second half for the Owls. Heard the pass wide open is Booth, but the pass sails out of bounds. Incomplete TCU's defense holds. Well, that's got to be a great momentum buster for Rice after uh, taking the opening kickoff here and marching the ball 56 yards down into uh, TCU's red zone at the 19-yard line. Hatfield decides to go for it on fourth down. And here he goes with uh, play action pass again. The wide receiver is over to the left on the, on the stop and go pattern. Oh man. And he's beat his man, Kenneth Hilliard, but the pass sails out of bounds. Ken Hatfield's gotta be frustrated on the sidelines, but I gotta ask you, Harold, they ran the ball all the way down to the TCU end of the field and then they threw on three of those four plays and they turn it over and here comes LT. Here comes Tomlinson, he turns the corner, he banged out of bounds at the 38-yard line. That's LT's biggest run of the day as he, he busted off a tackle for about an 18, 18-yard 18 run. Here you're going to see him. There's a huge hole over on his left side as he's able to get out there and then just outrun the inside pursuit. Takes a pretty wicked blow there on the sidelines and was a little slow getting up. 
And for Tomlinson, we've got him unofficially now at 100 yards on the day. And if that is correct, that will be nine consecutive 100-yard rushing efforts by Ladanian Tomlinson, the senior from Waco, Texas. Dave, you know, Tomlinson holds almost every rushing record that TCU could ever keep track of, and he just set one more. He was tied with Andre Davis with 16 100-yard games in his career, and with this uh, effort today, he now has number 17. One more record for LT. And Kenneth Davis was a great running back for TCU in the early 80s. LaDainian Tomlinson, okay, so what I was one yard off the total. 23 rushes, 101 yards, and a touchdown for LT. LaDainian Tomlinson to this point. Have a little bit of a delay down on the field as one of the defenders for the Rice Owls was shaken up on the play, knocking LT out of bounds, and now he is leaving the field. There's LaDainian Tomlinson, obviously a Heisman Trophy candidate. The greatest running back in TCU history, led the nation last year with 1,850 yards, including a big 406-yard effort against UTEP, who will be coming to town here in a couple of weeks. And Dave, uh, UTEP has been the surprise of the Western Athletic Conference this year as they're 5-0 uh, five, five and oh in conference play. Yep, no question. Uh, UTEP has really had a great season. The, the Miners program is really fired up. And the player who had to leave injured just moments ago on that tackle of LT was Kenny Smith. So the injuries continue to mount for the Rice defense. We'll go into that in just a moment. Printers on the play action. Swings it out incomplete. Roberts' his tight end was in the vicinity, as was Cedric James, but it's probably just as well that pass went incomplete because there were plenty of Rice defenders around. The defense, defensive injuries for Rice have really been mounting up. Cornerback Patrick Dendy out for the year with a collarbone problem. Defensive end Jarrett Irwin had a knee, did not play today. We expected to see B.J. Ferguson get some snaps today. He's been in there just a little bit, but he's not in playing shape. Rice went from having 14 healthy down linemen to just a half dozen. Here comes Tomlinson again. Tomlinson with a great move to midfield and beyond. Brought down at the Rice 49. Well, Dave, we mentioned earlier about Tomlinson gets stronger as the game goes on, and those carries between 21 and 30 are his best. And he's in that zone right now as he's had his two best runs of the game here the second half. Great lateral move and then sidestepping the safety as he comes up, and Tomlinson is on a roll. Tomlinson is the lone setback, and as you might expect, he gets the ball, and this time, Rice is waiting for him. Vanover was right there to make the stop. You know, you start thinking about what makes Ladanian Tomlinson so tough, and we, we've seen some of the the great characteristics that he has as a running back on this drive. He, he bounced one play to the outside, beat the defensive back to the corner, had a carry one play ago in which he made some great lateral moves. He's got great stop and go ability, just the total package that you would want in a college football running back. Loss of a yard, second and 11. Printers, pass, compete, complete. And James, discretion is the better part of Valor as he ducks out of bounds at the 43-yard line of the Owls. It'll be third down and three. Cedric James was wide open in the uh, right flat as uh, Printers delivers it to him over there and has a little running room. Here's James who had gone in motion. is wide open over there. And then Rice Pursuit comes in from the inside and uh, Dan Dawson pushes him out of bounds. So here we go, it's third down and three. Four wide receivers for printers. They are trips to the left. LT, the lone setback. And here he comes, he's got it. He's got a good block at the point of attack across the 35 to the 34 yard line. Another well executed play by the Frogs and the drive stays alive. And we saw on that play, something that we did not see all last week in a rainy night in Tulsa, a clutch third down conversion. We did, and the Frogs have been much better on third down uh, today than they were in Tulsa when they never converted one. Great block out there by uh, LaTerrence Dunbar to open up the outside. Maiden to the left, 
James to the right, continuing with a one-back set. Tomlinson dives, maybe gets down to the 32-yard line. Down to nine minutes to go in the third quarter. You know, someone wrote a pregame story this week claiming that this would be the fastest game in college football this year because you have two teams, Rice and TCU, that just love to run the football. And we have seen some terrific sustained drives by both teams. Second and seven from the 31. Cruz again on the short drop. Pass is caught. This is James. And it looks like James may have the first down. He does. He tight roped down the right sideline and was knocked out of bounds at the 23, and that'll move the chains for the Frogs. Dave, we talked about uh, TCU and Rice are both known for uh, their rushing, but Casey Printers here, as you see, has a career passing percentage of uh, nearly 59% completions. And in that game against Navy earlier this year, he completed 14 of 17 for an 82% and a school record. In that game against Navy, 17 pass attempts. That's the high of the year for printers. Here comes the lady and Tomlinson and Vanover with a good open field tackle. You don't see that happen very often. Vanover, one-on-one -on -one out there on an island, was able to bring down LT all by himself. That's a good play. Here's another look at it. Well, LT's trying to hit it up inside. Doesn't see much. Vanover does a tremendous job as he slides outside. He was who uh, Tomlinson was trying to avoid uh, in that inside hole off the guard. So that converted quarterback, Vanover, shows picture-perfect tackling. This is Tomlinson. Just keeps moving forward down to the 17-yard line. Well, that offensive line for uh, the Horn Frogs is uh, making a few holes for uh, LT, moving the moving this uh, Rice defensive line back. And as we talked in our opening about the strength of this offensive line, this is the 19th consecutive start that this unit has made. You, you'll, you can look all over the country, Dave, and I don't think you'll find a unit that has played together for that long. That is amazing. We, we talked about them in the open today. Tomlinson likes to refer to the guys up front as the big uglies, and then, but they've been painting a beautiful picture for him and the rest of the Frogs today. Printers on the play action got the ball quickly away to James, and he was leveled for his trouble by Gatlin. Nanoseconds after the pigskin arrived, so did Gatlin, and he separated the ball from James. Well, this is a tremendous play from Gatlin as he takes uh, James and just hits him right under the chin. TCU's running the same play that's been so successful for him, and there you see Gatlin just hitting uh, James just right under the chin. All right, so here is Kay Lackey into the game. This kick will come from the right hash mark. His other two field goals have come from the left hash mark today. This will be a 34-yard attempt as Kay Lackey goes for his third three-pointer of the afternoon. Right down the pipe. Seven oh seven to go, third quarter. Chris K. Lackey with his third field goal of the day. TCU 23, Rice nothing. We always say kids start using drugs because of peer pressure. Maybe we should start thinking about parent pressure. Talk to your kids. Let them know how you feel. Talk. Listen. Stay involved. It's about velocity, aerodynamics, gravity, kinetic energy, friction. It's about sports. It's ESPN Sports Figures. You can score points in school by learning math and physics through the dynamics of sports. ESPN Sports Figures. Put your brain in the game. I'm Tom Jackson, analyst on NFL Primetime, where we follow four golden rules. One, 
Never use computer enhancement to improve highlights. Two, never say the Redskins are playing the Cowboys when they're playing the Giants. And four, never hold back the best highlights.